Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come, oh, yeah. Or she come around. She said she did it was in the back. She could have walked around. Yeah, there. why she just didn't walk in the back to get us. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> I holler to told Joe, I said, well, the hearing as Joe told Donnie, he said, the Lord will provide. <laughs> 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. I guess it's time. I don't know. I feel yeah. Like 20 minutes. till. Yeah. 20 till. Time is in. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody tonight in the house of the Lord. On this Amen. Cold Wednesday night, but it's going to get colder. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to hunker down and make the best of it. That's all we can do. Next to the fire of the Holy Ghost, yeah. and He'll pull us right on through. And uh, I'll just say about Sunday, we don't know what uh, what's coming Sunday, but uh, they give him that we'll be all right on the cold part because it'll be warm in here. Uh, just making it to the car, we can get the car warm and get it there to drive. But the snow and the ice will be what, uh, what. But uh, we'll we'll go more su uh, Saturday, and then we'll uh, we'll make the calls and do all yeah. we can. And uh, sometimes things happen with circumstances out of our own control in our hands. And uh, Amen. We'll people get on the road and run off and have to call Jackson to have to get out and and uh, the emergency yeah. people. And, and Michael maybe had to get out. So, but uh, I'll play, I, can myself. <laughs> I will say uh, 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 Sunday morning for sure. I've got four wheel drive, so I'm going to make every effort I can to get to the radio station. So we'll have <laughs> the radio program. Uh, if nothing else, I'll just if I have to, I'll leave at seven o'clock uh, Sunday morning. So we will have the uh, service on there for so we'll tuning in, and uh, we'll be on there. And uh, Jessica told me, she said, you're, uh, she told me before, uh, she said, you're fearless. And I don't know what that exactly means, but uh, maybe I'm just uh, stupid sometimes. Maybe. <laughs> determined. Yeah, determined. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Determined. Uh, so, uh, but we will be on there Sunday morning. And uh, so tune in. I did uh, have a man this uh, evening when I was coming in uh, from work. I stopped at the dollar store in Summersville and... Uh, his name's David Bewley, and uh, he stopped me. I hadn't seen him for several years, and uh, he said, I want to ask you something. And I said, well, go ahead. And he said, uh, when you're on the radio program on Sunday, do you have a crowd? Or? I said, well, we got a crowd of one most usually. Donnie Jesse's in there. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, he said, I didn't know. He said, uh, he said, boy, we don't miss a program. He said, it, he said we listen every Sunday. And he said, man, he said, he said, it has to be of the Lord for, for the messages to go forth like that because it's just like you're preaching to 500 people. And I, said, well, <laughs> I said, it's something hard to get used to. I said, you get used to it, but at the same time when the anointing falls, you just, you close your eyes and you just roll with it. And uh, he said, well, he said, I tell you what, he said, it's an absolute blessing. And I said that to say all this because sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're on the radio uh, station and you, you never know who's listening, you don't know who's out there, and sometimes you drive away thinking, well, is this doing any good? Is, is anybody getting blessed or fed? Yeah. And then God sends people like that along to encourage. Amen. And, uh, and so we're going to keep on with that radio program. And, you know, there's folks that started coming here because of the radio program, and they've listened to the program. and. And we praise God for that. So we'll be on there Sunday morning. The uh, only thing that will keep us in is if there's five foot of snow and we sure can't get out. <laughs> or if there's an inch thick of ice on the road. And yeah. so and even then we may still break it. <laughs> ice worse than snow. Oh, yeah. yeah. When there's ice under the snow, that's what You can't it stop. Is. You can't turn. Yeah, you can't do nothing. You just got to go with the flow of men. And uh, so praise the Lord. What to say tonight before we pray, my cup is still running over from the service Sunday morning. Amen. And didn't that choir do a fantastic job? I mean, so many uh, compliments and comments and the spirit that moved and the anointing that was uh, upon the service. I tell you, it was something wonderful. And, and if you've not uh, seen it, uh, you can go back on Facebook and watch it and and uh, it was such a wonderful time. We've got to go up Sunday night to <coughs> Pittman Valley. 
uh, to their Christmas play, and I tell you, we were blessed again uh, Amen. Sunday night at, at uh, those folks up there. A wonderful time. And let me say, uh, in February, uh, sometime we're just waiting on the on the moving of the Spirit, but sometime probably I'm thinking in February we're going to begin here uh, at the church on probably be on Thursday nights. We're going to fire up visitation program. And uh, we're going to begin to go out and and uh, go out into the neighborhood, into the community, knock on doors. Uh, it's not about trying to get people into the church here, but we're going to try to win souls to the kingdom of God. And uh, not only that, but to try to be a blessing to people that are hurting. Uh, there's folks out there just uh, uh, just uh, the bottom line. They're not going to step foot into the church house. We are we are coming to that time. And a place where that folks are just, and COVID just done so much damage to the church. It really did. Amen. And folks now sit at home and they just see it's so much easier to sit at home. And now those folks that have had that mindset now, they don't even worship the Lord at home anymore. It's just uh, people have got relaxed and now people are hurting. And they've gotten so far away from the Lord, they don't know how, how to get the victory. They don't know how to get breakthrough. And so Jesus said, go into all the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Not to come into the local body necessarily, but to come into the kingdom of God. And it's up to us tonight. The Great Commission is upon the church to go out and tell others about Jesus and to win souls to the kingdom of Christ. I found... You know, used to people, churches I've been that we started this, and they would say, oh, I, I'm not going to go. They don't want to see you coming. They don't want people in their home. You know what I found? When you go and love the love of Christ, you knock on the door. You know, I don't think I've ever been turned away from any home. I, I've always been welcome because we treat people in the right way, and we treat them with the love of Christ. And, and more times than not, you'll win souls to the kingdom of God when you show them the love of Jesus Christ. Christ. And so I'm excited. I'm stirred in my heart. A lot of people has asked about that here. And I wanted to do it this past year, but uh, uh, we had, I had so many things personally uh, going on. But this year, I want to see 2023, a year that we win souls to the kingdom of Christ. And we see souls saved. Isn't that what it's all about? It's to see Amen. lives changed and hearts changed for us. And it must begin at the church. And the church, that's why we've got to walk right. We've got to walk in the spirit. We've got to live right, the right kind of lifestyle. You know, we can't win souls unless our life is lined up with the word of God. And so we're going to soak this thing down with prayer. We're going to go out. And so we'll uh, we'll have some dates and things. But we'll be doing this probably on Thursday. Somebody say, why Thursday? Well, I found uh, uh, in my experience with it, if you go out on Monday or Tuesday, by the time Sunday rolls around, they done forgot everything. <laughs> and so uh, and so we uh, uh, Thursday, I've always found, is the best night to go out and knock them on doors. And so we're going to go out, and especially the men. We'll see the men of the church get in this thing. And, and uh, but now the ladies want to do it as well. That'd be wonderful. And uh, I, I've got some ideas for the ladies that would want to go out and maybe some of the elderly that can't get out uh, to church. It'd be a good time to go and, and just meet over to the folks at home and take them food and pray with them and maybe sing. You know, this church loves singing uh, 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 more than a lot of churches I've seen. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's, there's something for everybody. Amen. Amen. So tonight, let's stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to get back into the Word of God, studying on the Holy Spirit and who He is. This week, uh, weekend coming up is Christmas weekend. We want to keep in mind that why Jesus came, why He was born of uh, this Virgin Mary. He, he was very God, but He was very man. Uh, he came to identify with man, to identify with our pain, our hurt, our heartaches, our troubles, our suffering. And so uh, on the deity side, humanity side, he never knew no sin. Isn't that amazing? He, he wasn't born, uh, uh, he didn't have uh, Joseph's blood running through him. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And Amen. so he was very God, very man, but he knew no sin. Even though he was tempted like you and I are, he withstood that temptation. When the devil took him out in the wilderness and tempted him 40 days, uh, Jesus withstood him and denied him. Uh, 
That tells me that Jesus overcame him. If you're saved and born again, he's in you. That makes you an overcomer tonight. And how did Jesus defeat the devil? He did it by his word. Hallelujah. Amen. So that Amen. means we've got to get the word in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not enough just to have daily devotions and all of these things. we got to get down and meditate on the Word of God and get down with the business with God and study His Word and get it in our hearts. Hallelujah. It's a, it, His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we hide it and we place it in our hearts that we may not sin against God. That's how vital His Word is tonight. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, tonight. Our mediator, our representative, our intercessor tonight, who stands on our behalf. And God, tonight, we're so thankful, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving tonight. And Lord, as we, that we get to come to a place such as this, Lord. We know that this is just a building, but God, it's set aside and anointed for the purpose of coming and, and Lord that we can come together and assemble together and worship your holy name tonight and Lord as we do this we know tonight that there's something about that uh, that God you honor you pour out your spirit upon your people uh, and you move mightily Lord just like that wind that blew uh, down in that valley of dry bones God and it blew, it blew uh, upon those dry dead bones that been there uh, for a long time and God, it revived them and made them to rise up and walk out of that valley like a mighty army. And God, tonight we know that, Lord, you can blow on the church tonight. Lord, the winds of revival. And Lord, how we need a great spiritual awakening, uh, even in this land that we're living in today, uh, in this nation of America. Lord, you see the trouble that's all around us. Uh, you see the affliction and how ungodly leaders, uh, wicked leaders, God, are forcing their agenda on us. And Lord, it's all fueled by the power of Satan. The God tonight, we're so thankful that you've already declared in your word that Lord, your people, the church, the blood bought church, Lord, has power, God, and we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us. And Lord, tonight, we're so thankful, God, that Lord, even though we're in this world, we're not of this world. And Lord, we're asking you in these last final days that we're living in uh, that God you would give us a holy boldness to be able to stand uh, Lord whether it cost us our family members or friends uh, or loved ones Lord uh, or neighbors that live around us uh, that God we would stand upon your word and stand in your love uh, that we would proclaim and herald the glorious good news uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, Lord we thank you for this church we thank you for this people uh, we thank you for the hearts, Lord, that are dedicated and committed. Lord, not just to this church, but they're dedicated and committed because they're dedicated to you tonight. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this people. And God, we thank you for each one that's made an effort to come out tonight. And I just know that, God, you're going to bless each one. And Lord, we ask you that, God, your spirit would move amongst us. And Lord, that you would give me the anointing, Lord, and guidance and direction. And your words upon my lips tonight, that Lord, we may have ears that are anointed to hear your word tonight, and Lord, may it teach us, and Lord, the Spirit teach us, and give us insight and comprehension of your word, and Lord, not only that, but Lord, may it find a place in our heart, that your word would grow us and strengthen us tonight, and we give you all the praise and all the the honor and the glory. We thank you for the service this past Sunday, God, and the moving of the Spirit and the songs that were sung. And we thank you, God, that they were so uplifting and encouraging. And Lord, we praise you tonight with all that we have. For there is no God like you tonight, and there is no help outside of you. So God, we need you tonight, not only in this nation, not only in this church, but in our individual life. And we ask all these things in the mighty most powerful and yet most precious name that's ever been uh, the name of Jesus uh, and all God's people said Amen Amen. 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 Let's give him a big praise tonight. He's so good. He's so 
good. Hallelujah. Well, we've been going through the last several weeks on the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is, this third in the Godhead. I feel that God is, is trying to show us tonight just how, how that we need the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus has went away. And he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send the Comforter. He's going to be alongside of you to help you. He's going to be alone to console you. He's the advocate. He's going to be your strength. He's going to be your power. And without the Holy Spirit, you're not going to you're not going to survive in this wicked world that we live in. And I believe the Lord is trying to tell us tonight how vital and how important the Holy Spirit is. But not only that, but how that you and I can have this intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. How that we ought to love Him and recognize the Holy Ghost just as we would recognize God Almighty. He is God. He's the third in the Godhead. He's God, the Holy Spirit. I've come to realize in my own life and my own ministry and the work that God's given you to do. Every one of us has a work that God has given us to do. Every one of us has gifts and talents that the Lord has given us. We all got different operations and work in the church to do. And God anoints that work by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we not only need the Spirit taking up residence in our heart when we're saved, but we need to be praying for the filling, infilling of the Holy Ghost and power. That's why Jesus said uh, that you shall be filled with that power from on high. He said you can be clothed and you with that power from on high. Why? So that you shall be my witnesses uh, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, we can't sing. I've learned in my ministry uh, that God's given me uh, that I dare not stand uh, even if it's Wednesday night or Sunday or any time of the week or even if I'm in someone's home uh, or in my own home. Uh, and I dare not try to make it without the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can't be effective in the preaching uh, without the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can't be effective in the singing without the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I know there's a lot of groups out there today. A lot of souls out there. Uh, they've got beautiful wonderful voices uh, but they don't have the touch of the Master's hand uh, and the touch of the Spirit. But boy Amen. they're good entertainers uh, and much of the church today is sad to say would rather be entertained today uh, than to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I want the power hallelujah. I don't care how good it looks. Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 I believe the Lord is trying to show his church that tonight that we need that power of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to understand tonight, every one of us in this place, the Bible declares we're peculiar. That means we're unique. We're different. We're set apart from this world. That's why the church ought not even look like the world or act like the world or talk like the world because we've been set apart. We're unique tonight. And it's all by the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We Amen. It tonight, when I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of power, glory to God. I think about strength tonight. When I think about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. When I think about that indwelling Holy Spirit, I think about that indwelling power, that power that comes from all time. Let me tell you something tonight. Those who desire to live for God uh, who love him uh, will find that that continuous uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, they'll find that it's a necessity in life. Uh, you can't live life outside of the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure every one of us in here tonight has one time or another uh, we've stepped out of the bounds of the Holy Spirit and we've uh, just been the natural mind of man. That's how the natural mind works. Uh, that old admit nature song Sometimes it rises up within us and we think we can figure things out on our own. We think we can make it on our own. But honey, tonight we cannot make it outside of the Holy Spirit. That's why God gave him, hallelujah, to the church, to the born again, that he would be our helper, glory to God. It's, not, uh, it's the purpose of Jesus Christ uh, not only to give us the Holy Spirit but John 14, 16 uh, says that he would abide with us uh, forever. Amen. Amen. That word forever Amen. means forever. I'm glad tonight uh, that I don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit leaving me. Jesus said he'll abide with you uh, and in you uh, forever. 
somebody said, well, I just don't feel like the Holy Spirit is with me. Well, honey, I'm glad it doesn't matter what we feel like. It's not based on our emotions or what we feel. It's based upon what God's Word declares tonight. Amen. So I want to look at tonight some things the Bible uh, uses to explain the Holy Spirit as He dwells in our lives and things that I see in the Word of God that, that I broke down here. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 8. Uh, the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Uh, Paul, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit through the pen of Paul uh, and says many things about the Holy Spirit in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Uh, we know the Romans chapter 8, we know it as the victory chapter. Paul had been struggling with this with this struggle between the flesh and the spirit because the two don't line up. You can't live in the flesh under the dominion of the flesh and under the dominion of the spirit. It doesn't work. We have to come out from under the flesh. The flesh has to be crucified. And so I look at Romans chapter 8 verse 5. The Bible says, for they that are after the flesh, that's the natural man, they do mind the things of the flesh. In other words, they're trying to satisfy the cravings of the flesh. But he said they that are after the Spirit that's the Holy Spirit they mind the pains of the Spirit. In other words they're walking in the Spirit and their lives are governed by the Spirit and so all they think in their mind is that the flesh is behind me and all I want for my life is what the Holy Spirit desires for me in my life. Paul said for to be carnally minded is death but to be be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's the Man. mind that is completely set on the Holy Spirit. He said because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's a mind that is set on the flesh, on the fleshly desires, everything that's in the natural man. Paul said the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Why? Because the flesh is nothing but rebellious and disobedient to the things of God. That's why the flesh must be crucified. That's why Paul would use the statement to be circumcised in the flesh. He's talking about the flesh being cut off. Cut out. Hallelujah. And now we're no longer under the dominion of the flesh. But we need to be spiritually minded. Amen. Amen. In other words, everything that we do, every step we take, every, when, you, when you get to where you have problems, when you don't know how to pay the bill and how that it's going to be took care of, that's when you start praying, Holy Spirit, help me, guide me, direct me, and lead me. When you don't know where to go, what direction to take, Holy Spirit, guide me. That's being spiritually minded. How many knows what I'm talking about tonight? Amen. Amen. The flesh, Jesus said, profits nothing. The flesh is disobedient. That's the nature of the flesh. And so Paul said, so then they, are, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. Why? Because Paul would say in another place, there is no good thing in the flesh. But he said this, but you, somebody say, he means me. He means me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Ye are not in the flesh. Why? Because you've been born again. Amen. How many been born again here? Amen. How many Amen. been saved? Amen. So therefore, you are not to be in the flesh. You are not in the flesh, but you are what? In the, in the spirit. spirit. The Holy Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God, and I love this statement. This is what I want you to see here. If the so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Amen. Somebody Amen. said, where's the Holy Spirit? He's in me. He's in you. Amen. The, the moment you are saved and born again, the Holy Spirit came in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, what's it say? He is not his. So when I see this here, and I see that the Word of God tells me I've been saved, I've been born again, the flesh has been put to death, it's been buried with that old man, and now I'm to be spiritually minded. Why? Because when I got saved, the 
Holy Spirit took up residence in my heart and in my life. What is the heart? I think about the heart. I wrote this down. It's, it's the house. I'm now the housing of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He dwells in you. And so now the Holy Spirit is that major factor in the house. Hallelujah. He takes possession of the heart for Christ. We ought to have our hearts fully possessed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Christ dwells in our hearts. How? By his Spirit. The Holy Spirit occupies our heart. That means he occupies the house. He's a major factor in our house. Hallelujah. He's, we are the housing of the Holy Spirit. And we occupy him. He takes up residence in our house, in our heart, until Jesus comes. The Holy Spirit, if this is the housing of the Holy Spirit, my heart, my I sold my life is the house of the Holy Spirit. That means that I've got to give him the key to every door, to every room in the house, every room of this house that he dwells in. And, and he also has to have use of all the furniture in the house. He is a major factor in this house, in the heart. He occupies every room of the house, of the heart. John 14, 17 says, as the world knows him not. He said, Jesus said, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I want to read something just for a moment in Psalms 51. I was reading this this morning. We know this that this is the penitent psalm of David after he went into Bathsheba and after he had Uriah killed on the battlefield and David committed his great sin. But we read in Psalms 51 and David is repenting from his heart to the Lord and he's saying, Lord, I acknowledge my sin, my transgression, all of this is before you. And he, but I want you to look down. He said down in verse 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit uh, within me. That's a steadfast spirit. He said, cast me, now listen, to this, cast me not away from thy presence. Amen. Amen. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now, that was back under the old covenant. And I'm glad that today, under the new covenant, that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would be with us forever and abide with us forever. And I'm going to go through this life because I'm not perfect. I'm going to fail the Lord. I'm going to mess up in this life because I'm still human. Now, hallelujah. But I'm glad that Jesus said you've got the Holy Spirit. Now let me tell you something. When we sin and we willfully sin, let me tell you something. I don't believe he's going to take his spirit from you. But I'll tell you what would be even worse is to not be able to feel the presence of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Especially after, after experiencing the fullness of God and the goodness of God. That's why the Holy Spirit is an advocate. He'll help us when we get down. One of his jobs, uh, the job, the duty, responsibility of the Holy Spirit is to convict. Hallelujah. So when I fail the Lord, when I mess up, the Holy Spirit is going to deal with me. And my responsibility is to do like that. And say, Lord, don't take your presence from me. Don't let the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something what sin will do in the Christian's life. Hallelujah. God won't take the Holy Spirit from you. But that fellowship will be broken. And that communion with the Holy Spirit, your power source, your strength, when that fellowship is broken, you better off not to even know the way of righteousness than to have known it. And turn from it. Amen. And you say amen. 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 So the Holy Spirit is a major factor in the house. Uh, the housing of the Holy Spirit. The second thing I think of. Uh, and I love this. You know this story in John chapter 4. That Samaritan woman came to Jacob's well. Uh, I think about the Holy Spirit. Uh, that he's as a spring in a wheel. Uh, he's within you tonight. Uh, I don't have to come to the church house. Uh, to experience the Holy Spirit. He's with me everywhere I go. 
I don't have to go to revival meeting. All those things are wonderful. We ought to do that. But I'm, very, I'm glad when I wake up in the morning, uh, he's there abiding in me. Uh, that's what the word says. He's dwelling in me. Uh, hallelujah. I'm glad uh, when I go to bed at night, uh, the Holy Spirit is abiding within me. Uh, and while I'm asleep at night and my head's on my pillow, I don't know what may be around because I'm out of this world. Uh, but I'm glad the Holy Spirit is there watching over me. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the angel of the Lord uh, encamps round about them that fear him. Uh, there's angels watching over me. Uh, I'm glad the Holy Spirit, he's with us everywhere I go. Uh, and I'm glad he's as a spring uh, in a well, springing up inside of me. People say, why do you get so excited? How do you get so enthusiastic? Because I've got a well inside of me. I've got a spring inside of me. And it's a never-ending well. Somebody, Amen. And Jesus said in John chapter 4, hallelujah, the Bible said he told the Samaritan woman, give me some drink. Down in verse 10, Jesus, he said unto that woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me the drink, thou wouldst have asked to him and he would have given you living water. You know what he's talking about there? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The woman said to him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence thou hast thou that living water? He didn't have nothing to draw with because he is the well. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, the woman said to him, and he said, from whence thou, she said, that living water. And she said, art thou greater than our father Jacob, uh, which gave us the well, uh, and drank thereof himself, uh, and his children, and his cattle. And Jesus said unto her, uh, he said, whosoever, and I'm glad he said whosoever, because that included this old alcoholic. That included this old drug addict. That means whosoever shall call Amen. upon the name of the Lord can drink from this well and receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. That's the things of this world. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. And he said, but the water that I shall give him, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, shall be in him a well, a well. Somebody ought to hear me tonight. Shall be Amen. <laughs> in him, shall be in you, shall be in you Amen. a well. It's not over here down here. It's not 
in Samaria. It's not in Jerusalem. It's in you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I like about it, that well is deep. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I said that well is deep. Why? Because that spring is in God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a well of never ending water, never ending supply of joy. Glory to God. Somebody, you know, I told the story here several times. Somebody, uh, you know, back when COVID hit, and I had some fear of you, and people talking about me and, and accused me of everything. Want to get people sick, want to kill people. And even some said, I hope you get it. All of this. And, you know, somebody told me one time, I, I heard them, they told somebody else, and another person told me, you know how word gets around. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> they said, well, you know what they told me? He said, we shouldn't go down there to grace shooting. You know, the world's in trouble. There's so much chaos going on. You might go down there and you might get the joy. They all down there full of joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you better watch it. I mean, you go down there and you get the joy. You go out here in the midst of the world. I mean, they're doing everything, everything going violence and, and you'll be walking around with joy in your heart. But let me tell you something. I've got joy and that joy is the strength that I need. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's a glorified joy. Why? Because Amen. I've got a well inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you to be fools and just do whatever. I think we ought to plan and do things that we need to. But I don't have no concern on what's coming. I've got a well inside of me. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. I don't have to come to the church and call on it. He goes with me everywhere I go. He's a well inside of me. Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen brother. Oh, praise the Lord. Not only that, you're going over to John chapter 7. You'll see uh, some of my most favorite scriptures uh, on the Holy Spirit in John chapter 7, verse 37. Jesus stood up. It was the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, that's where Israel had celebrated those years that God had brought them through the wilderness and He took care of them. And Jesus stood up and He said, uh, He said, If any man thirsts, in verse 37, He said, If any man thirsts, uh, if any man thirsts, uh, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, that speaks of faith. He that believes on me, as the scripture, the word of God has said, out of his belly, that's out of his heart, that's out of his innermost being, that's where it flows, rivers of living water. And verse 39 says, but this spoke he of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But now I'm telling you we're on this side of this scripture now. Jesus has been glorified and we've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I want you to know Amen. tonight, not only is he as a spring and a well, but he is as a river and a fountain. I'm telling you tonight when you get saved, you ought to have rivers flowing out of your innermost being. It ought to be a river that's gushing, coming out of you. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you, that blessing is not coming find just to the well, but it flows out just like refreshing streams. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, I'm glad there's a river within me and that Holy Spirit that dwelling within us. You know what it ought to be like? It ought to be a fountain to those that are around you. Everywhere you go, you walk in the break room at your job, when you're at your family gatherings. How do you ought to not just cut it off? You ought to let that river flow and everybody around you that there's a river that's a rushing. It's a mighty river. And when they ask you what it is, tell them it's the Holy Ghost. That's Amen. 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 Preach it. Preach it, brother. Hallelujah. He has a river in a fountain of the Holy Spirit that uh, he ought to be gushing out of us so strong. I mean, you, you see people today. I'm telling you, God, I go around every day. I'm out in the public. And I've never seen so many people that are church going folk. Uh, they claim to be saved. That's between them and the Lord. But they act like they're so defeated. And they look like they're so defeated. And we have them coming here in services. Uh, and they'll sit out in the crowd and their countenance. Uh, I'm not talking about the way they act. I'm talking about their countenance. Uh, they act like they're so defeated in life. Uh, let me tell you tonight. 
time. God didn't desire us to live in defeat. And you don't have to be content with a defeated life. There's a river flowing in you. And Amen. that river washes all down away and drives the fear away tonight. Amen. There's a river flowing in the innermost thing. Hallelujah. I thought about this. I wrote it down. That, that outflow of that river, it's only according to the springing up. That's within us. You know what tonight? You're only going to get what you want Amen. from God. That's just the bottom line. You, if you expect very little, you'll get very little from the Lord. But if you expect what God has promised us in His Word to have, and you believe it by faith, God will provide it. Hallelujah. And I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be brought down under the dominion of Satan. Why? Because I've got a river, and that river is the Holy Ghost, and He's my source of strength and power tonight. And so that's why, you know, that old song I thought we used to sing it back in the old church that said spring up on well and that's what I want in my life. I want folks to see that river. I tell you, we're living in such a time where people you know, people have gotten so disrespectful. People have gotten so irreverent to the Lord and the things of God and we've got so many with so many opinions today walking around in their own thoughts and their own comprehensions of what God is and what God said and they have no idea what the word of God God said, and it's it's so sad that it's even in the church today, in the modern church. But uh, let me tell you something. Uh, listen, if you get that river in you, uh, things will change in your life. Uh, your outlook on life will change. Uh, your future will change. Uh, if you want very little from the Lord, that's all you're going to get. And if you're just content with just uh, Sunday morning religion, that's about all your life will be. Uh, but if you get in this river, as Ezekiel got in that river, I'm telling you, my friend, it'll be a river you can't even swim at. It'll be a river that'll be flowing over your head. You'll be saturated in that river. He must in that river. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. 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 I'm glad to see the God. Hallelujah. Turn on with me to Psalms 104. I come across this the other day, and I had no idea that God was going to use it. And I thought, you know, this go right along with it. In Psalms 104, verse 16, I thought, you know, the Holy Spirit, not only is He a major factor in the house, in the heart, not only is He a, as a spring in a well, or as a river in a fountain, but I thought He's as the sap that flows through the trees. In Psalms 104, verse 16, the Bible says the trees of the Lord are full of sap. You and I tonight are all to be like trees planted by the water, trees planted by the river, planted and rooted and grounded in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so much so as the psalmist said in Psalms 1 that we make the declaration no matter what hell throws at us, no matter what the powers of darkness throws at us, we shall not be moved. Why? Because we are trees of the Lord and we are full of sap. That sap to me speaks of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. He's the sap in the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 11, Paul said, uh, he said that the Holy Spirit uh, has the power to quicken your mortal bodies uh, and he dwells in you. Hallelujah. He can make you alive. Uh, that sap that springs up in a dead uh, and a worthless tree. You look around. Uh, how do you think that the trees survive through the cold winter? How do you think that the trees of the Lord survive uh, through our cold winter seasons and Life. It's because uh, that there's a something that runs through these trees. Uh, it's the sap of the Holy Spirit, and it brings life to the to the tree. It brings beauty to the tree, uh, and not only that, but it makes that tree to flourish. Uh, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me that we're living in an age uh, that, that we can't have what the old apostles had, that we can't have what the early church had. That's a bunch of garbage that comes straight out of hell. Don't tell me we can't have the gifts in operation as the early church had. That's an old teaching that the Baptists started. And they said, went out with the old apostles. My friend, that's a lie that comes from the devil because he don't want you to realize that you can have the fullness of the Holy Spirit because the devil knows if you get full of the Holy Ghost and power and the gifts begin to operate through you to edify the church, that you're going to be a threat to his kingdom. My friend, we need it today as much as Peter Amen. and John did. Amen, Amen, brother. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. One time, he said, well, those gifts will go out. And the Bible 
says they'll cease. I said, you're right. The Bible does say they'll cease. They'll cease when the rapture takes place. Amen. Amen. We won't need them no more. Hallelujah. We'll find our race will be over. Our battle will be over. Our, 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 we'll have run that race. Hallelujah. And there'll be no need for it. The Holy Spirit. He does the same thing to man. He makes us flourish. He gives us beauty. Now, I, I'm not pretty to look at. I know that. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit gives an inner beauty. It makes you beautiful before the eyes of God. And when you're walking in the Spirit and that Spirit is indwelling in you, it, He causes you to flourish. He causes you to have life. Hallelujah. So the trees of the Lord are full of sap tonight. How many say amen to that? Amen. 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 Amen, bro. I'm telling you, we need power in our churches today. Right? Amen. 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 Our churches don't have the power like they used to. Right. Our services have become cold and dead because it's it's because of the heart of people. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, if we want the power, we've got to get in it. Hallelujah. We've got to pray. We've got to get a hold of God's word. We've got to quit this bickering and fighting. You know, James said in James chapter 3, the tongue is like a poison. And that tongue is destroyed among the church. And it's called schisms and divisions in the church. And cliques that come up in the church. I'll tell you what, nothing bothers me anymore than when I see a church that has a click here and a click there and they're all working against each other trying to tear the church out of pieces. And if I ever see that here, don't think I'm going to back off and not do anything about it because I'm going to stand up for the Lord. I'm going to stand on His Word and we'll put an end to that thing and the Holy Ghost will take care of us. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. The church needs to rise up like never before and be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only that, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. One of my most favorite scriptures in the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. You know this scripture. Well, we ought to, and we ought to get a hold of it tonight. I want you to understand. Then not only does the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I feel like here before long, I just got to get all these things out of the way that the Lord's showing me first. But I feel like the Lord's working us up because I want you to know there is such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'll say tonight, the Baptist is just about the worst and trying to tell folks there is no such thing. But the Word of God declares different and I'm going to prove it through the Word of God, not by opinions, not by what I think. I told a man the other day, I don't line up my preaching, I don't line up my study with the Baptist doctrine or the Methodist doctrine or any other kind of doctrine. I study the Word of God, always have, always will, and I study it for what it says and what it means. Amen. If God didn't think we needed the power and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, He would have put it in His Word. But tonight we need it. I believe every word of the Bible from the Genesis 1-1 to Revelation. I believe every single thing that it says and I believe Believe it applies for you and I today, and we can't take scripture out and rip it out just because we've never been taught that, or just because we don't agree with it. We gotta take the whole counsel of God's word as it is. Amen. 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 Never been a big denomination verse, but here's how God's blessed me. I'm just gonna throw this in there. He's blessed me to be able to pastor churches that I could go in. And God proved himself through his word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter, I pastor a Cumberland Presbyterian church. Amen. Walked in there with the preaching of God's word through the power of the Holy Ghost and people accepted it. The thing here, what I love about you, you're not worried about what's over the door. You're just hungry for what God's word says. Amen. I'm Amen. You tonight, and the Baptists are getting about as bad as shape. We talk about the Methodists lining arms with the homosexual. The Baptists are heading right in that same direction. Not only that, the Catholics are heading that way. The Methodists are already headed that way. The Presbyterians are already headed that way because of, there's a certain word that is so dangerous in the church of the living God and it's a word called compromise. But you're looking at one tonight who has made up his mind. I dare not compromise the word of God. It is what it is and we we'll stand on it because God's word is forever settled in heaven. Therefore it ought to be forever settled in our hearts tonight. Amen. Amen. 
to him. I just want the devil to know I'm in business tonight. Yeah. And any force of evil that tries to shut it down. God's word is still the same today and it applies today as it did in the early church. Amen. And so I think about this verse in Ephesians 5.18. Paul said, be not drunk with wine. He's using an analogy here. He said, we're in his access, but be filled with the Spirit. Be Amen. filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you mean? It's just like as the alcoholic uses the alcohol to control his life. And that alcohol governs his life. Paul is saying be filled with the Spirit at all times. And let the Holy Spirit control your life and be filled. And I've got to think about that verse. And I thought, you know, the Holy Spirit wants to fill us tonight as the waters that fill the sea. i got to think about tonight uh, how that the waters, of, when you look at them in the ocean and the sea, there's not a crevice, there's not a hole, even if it's a hundred miles deep in that ocean that is not filled by the water of that sea. And that's exactly how the Holy Ghost wants to fill your life and fill my life. He wants to fill Amen. every void, every crevice, every hole. He wants to fill you and govern you and control your life because He is God. And we ought to let Him tonight fill us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. fills every chasm in that ocean, that water. And that's just what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He, 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 he not only that, but the Holy Spirit, when He fills it, He wants to cleanse. That's why John the Baptist said, uh, He said, I need baptize you with water, but there's coming one after me uh, who's Amen. Been born before me, uh, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to strip down and lash it, but He's going to baptize you uh, with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Power. Don't tell me to the back of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't get in what the enemy talks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not even in a shark cage. But you know, you see in those deep sea divers, they just keep going and keep going and keep going. And you know, you look around in those oceans, and I mean, it looks like they just, I mean, just miles and miles. And so I thought about in the sea, there's enough room for every living thing. And so in the Holy Spirit, there is enough power to live our life as the Word of God wants us to live. Amen. Amen. I'm glad Amen. that the Holy Ghost is an endless supply. Let me tell you something. If you want Him tonight and you want to be filled by the Holy Ghost, you don't have to have me with you. You don't have to be at the church. It's just like the greatest gift that God gives to the sinner is salvation. The greatest gift He gives to the child of God is the infilling of the Holy Ghost and power. He wants His children to be filled up with the power. We've got so many today in the church, they think they're filled up with power. But for some reason, it's like a light switch. They turn it on and they turn it off when they desire. But God wants to fill you every moment of your life. It don't stop at the family gatherings. It don't stop at work. It don't begin when you walk into the church house and then when you get in the car and leave. He wants to control every single detail, every moment of your life. That's why I just every morning I get up and I pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The last thing I want to look at I want to turn over to Micah chapter 3. And I know this is in the, the old covenant, but the Holy Spirit is working here as he did. He came in a new dimension on the day of Pentecost, but the Holy Spirit would move at certain times on certain people in the Old Testament, but he was the same Holy Spirit. And I got to thinking about this last thing. That Holy Spirit, the third in the God here, he is our strength in our body. Our physical body. I'm telling you tonight, there's no way that I could preach. There's no way. I, I've watched my daddy 
a lot of times get up and preach. And I, I never realized until after I was saved and after I started growing in the Lord. And I only got to see him preach about three or four times after I was saved. I seen him many times as a child uh, and times uh, that I was away from the Lord. But I didn't understand it those times. But after I got saved and watched him preach, uh, you know, I, I, I had been saved about two or three weeks. And everywhere I got saved, the church I got saved at, the pastor had him preach one Sunday morning. I'm telling you, I never heard such a preaching in my life. And you know, it's different when you get saved. Amen. Everything gets is different. Amen. And, and uh, Brother Gary Irvin, he, he wanted to do my ordination service. He called me one day and he was getting it all lined out. And he said, who do you want to preach your ordination service? I said, well, that's a no-brainer. I want my daddy to preach my ordination service. And, you know, he stood. That was his last message that he ever preached. Uh, and, you know, he stood up, and he was sick in body. He'd been sick with heart disease for about 40-some years. Uh, and they uh, used to kid me. It started when I was born back in 1980. And, but, you know, he, he, he had such horrible, terrible heart disease. And I would say, it was many times he had heart attacks after he preached. I've seen him have to lay him across the front pew after invitation and rush him to the hospital one time over in Springfield. But you know, I, 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 I see him preach. And, but you know, uh, God always kept him while he was preaching. Uh, you know why? Because there's an anointing that comes with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is strength, uh, divine strength to the physical body. And no matter if you're sick tonight, no matter what infirmities you might be dealing with, the Holy Ghost will give you divine strength to make it through, uh, through whatever Amen. it is that you have need. That's why Paul, he prayed three times, Lord, take away this thorn in my flesh. And Jesus said, I'm not going to take it away. Paul is there to keep you humble. But he said, I do want you to know this, that my grace is always going to be sufficient. My grace will be sufficient to meet your every need. And no matter what your ailment is, no matter what your suffering might be, the Holy Spirit will always give divine strength to make it through. Amen. Hallelujah. In Micah chapter 3. The Assyrians are getting ready to come in and take the people of God captive. And in Micah chapter 3, verse 5, Micah here, he rises up, he says, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. These were the false prophets, the false preachers. And back then, this day, in Micah's day, these were false preachers that were just hired preachers. They were wanting to get paid. And so what did they do? They preached a false prosperity. They preached a false peace and a false safety. They were telling the children of Israel, everything's going to be all right. You don't have to worry about it. Just keep on doing what you... And then... Align our pockets with your money, and we'll keep preaching you this good gospel and this wonderful gospel. But here's what thus says the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people hear, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace, and he that puts not into their mouths. They even prepare war against him. What, what does he mean that? Meaning that these higher preachers and these paid preachers, they were mad when they didn't get paid their money. And it's, you know, nothing new under the sun today. No. no. I've worked no. with a lot of preachers <laughs> that get mad when they don't get their offerings or they don't get their pay in revival. They get upset. And so the Bible says, God said, therefore, night shall be unto you that you shall not have a vision. And it shall be darkened to you that you shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets. And the day shall be dark over them. He's talking about when the Assyrians are going to come in. And they're going to take the people captive. And these prophets, what are, what's going to happen to them? They're going to have to answer for it. And the Bible says in verse 7, Then shall the seers, these are the false prophets, be ashamed. There's going to come a day when the false prophets of the day that we're seeing today, there's going to come a day when they're going to be ashamed for what they stood behind the pulpit and preach. You know, a feel-good gospel always feels good. But let me tell you something, a lot of people today, they only want the blessing side of God. They don't want to hear about the wrath of God. They don't want to hear about the judgment of God. They want to continue to live in their sin and at the same time exploit the blessings of God. But how you can't have it that way. And if you're going to walk with God and be in this thing with God, you've got to take all of God just as He is. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says, 
said, God said through the prophet Micah, then shall the seers be ashamed. And the diviners, that's the fortune tellers, confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. But listen to what Micah said in verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. There's power in the Holy Spirit and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. That might of the Holy Spirit is the anointing, the endowment to deliver the message that they needed to hear. I look back there at Brother Jackson and I, there's no way we can stand, stand and preach the word of God and I dare not outside of the endowment of the Holy Spirit, outside of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I'm so thankful that God has never failed me each time I've stood on the platform wherever it's been. He has always been faithful to give me the anointing that I need. I, I don't, I'm not here to please man. I'm not here to preach what man wants to hear. I'm here to preach what man needs to hear. And God always supplies the message because he knows what's in the heart of man. And he knows what man needs to hear. I'm not here to tickle ears. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to preach what thus saith the Lord. Why? Because I've got the power of the Holy Ghost and the love of Jesus in my heart. Amen. And I'm going to preach what thus saith the Lord. Amen. You can't do it without the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. There's might and power in that Spirit. Hallelujah. And so, let me tell you, I, I thought about this. A strong man, he doesn't put on and put off his strength as the situations come along and as those situations require. But he carries it with him and in him everywhere he goes. I mean, I've seen preachers, and, and let me tell you, I've seen preachers that stand on the platform and preach, and I mean they'll preach the roof off the house. But you see them out in public, and they've got the most rotten attitude you've ever seen. Won't even hardly speak to you. And many I've tried to talk to them about the Lord, and I think, boy, here's one I could talk to about the Lord. And you try to talk to them, and they're trying to hurt them. Get out of there. Let me tell you, here's the way I Joe Miller looks at it. You can preach the roof off. You can preach the best preaching you ever preached. Have the most eloquent voice. And by the way, having a smooth sounding voice, that's not necessarily the endowment and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. No. No. Satan himself can transform into an angel of light. Amen. And preach a gospel and, and deceive the very elect. Right. But you know, let me tell you something. You can preach. I mean, preach the greatest message and then walk out them doors having a rottenness attitude. Honey, let me tell you, you turn me off right off the bat. You can put on a good front in the church house. Your real test is when you get out there in the public and in the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So you don't put on and put off this string just as it requires. Honey, I need it every moment of my life. I, I, I am attacked by the, by the devil just about every minute of the day. Why? Because he knows I'm full of the power of the might of the Holy Spirit. And he knows that I'm a threat to his kingdom. So I've got to continuously wear the whole armor of God. Amen. 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 Let my God down. We all ought to feel that way. So that man, he uses his strength that every part of his body is filled with that strength. Feel the power. Hallelujah. So it's God that worketh in us tonight, not of our own strength. I don't have this strength. I don't have the ability to do what I do. In my daily living, I don't have the strength. When I wake up in the morning, my mindset is to live for God throughout the whole day. And I know well enough to know I cannot do it on my own merits and by my own way and my own strength. That's why I need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, without him, we're just a helpless corpse. Yep. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad God's gave him. Amen. That we may have him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Anybody got anything tonight before we close out? Hallelujah. Praise God. He's always with us. No matter how far we try. Good message. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you, Brother Jackson, I just publicly tell you, and others here, and I look back at Tony and Marla, and 
the anointing that comes on them when they sing. I heard a man say one time, he said, preachers are called to preach, but singers just go sing. I thought, man, that is, that is about the most ungodly statement. Singers are called to sing too. Amen. Everybody's called to do something. Mm -hmm. And I think about Tony and Marla, the spirituals, when they get up to sing, there's, they, there's no way. Now, that good singer's got good voices, but they wouldn't sound nowhere near as good if, if the Holy Spirit wasn't upon it. Amen. 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 And no group, I, I've heard some of the best harmony, four part harmonies, quartets, metal quartets. I, I've been in those places. I, I've been behind the scenes. I've seen those things. I've seen their rotten attitudes and how they act above everybody else. Then get out there on the platform and act like they're spiritual and righteous. And then come off the thing and talk some of the most ungodly talk and tell some of the most ungodly jokes. I'm telling you something, my friend. You you can fool a lot of people, but you can't fool God. Amen. 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 The light's going to shine on that God. Amen. And they'll be put out. Hallelujah. Because Amen. we're in a time where only the real is going to stand. Amen. God's going to use them. And I've seen all of that. And people, people today are so mistaken that the better somebody sounds in singing, the more anointing they've got. That ain't what the anointing is. You'll know the anointing when you hear it. Amen. When the Spirit of God begins to go from the heart that is ministering to the hearts that are hearing the Word of God, and God's Spirit begins to touch their spirit, and something begins to move in them and stir in them. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not, and for preachers, it's not how high a preacher may jump, how high he may kick his leg or right. how far he may run or how loud he may get. Right. And that, not every preacher is that way. It, it, so one of the most anointed messages I ever heard preached was from an elderly man that stood behind the pulpit and never moved one muscle outside of that pulpit, never raised his voice, but he preached a message that was so anointed and so soul-stirring. It was endowed by the Holy Ghost and power. And we got people who think that you unless you jump, run, and scream, and holler, there's no anointing in it. That's not what the anointing flows to. It flows through the Word of God that's being preached. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes I thought maybe I wish it might be thought it might be better. I kind of tone it down a little bit. And even though sometimes I've tried, Mike, I just can't do it. <laughs> that's how not how God gave it to me. Everybody's different. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's just me. Somebody told me one time you, what you need to do in your preaching. I mean, have you ever had people tell you what Jack you ever had to tell people they had to need to preach? <laughs> I've had right. say, you know. What you need to do is get up and just start slowly and let it work you build. But I say, you know, I, I cannot do that because I pray through before I come to church. Amen. I'm ready the time I get to the house. Amen. I'm stirred up before I get in the door. So the moment I take the platform and step into the calling that God has called me to do, I'm geared to go off the path. Amen. Amen. That's a high octane. Holy Ghost, high octane. Hallelujah. I better stop. Somebody yeah. else got any pain? Read John 4, like, 24. Yeah. John 4, 24. Read man. John 4, 24. Hallelujah. God is the Spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Yep. That's the only kind of worship God will recognize. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was listening to a song this week. That's the good one. was saying, said, if God is dead, said, what the... What is this that I feel living down Amen. in my soul? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Well, it's a good statement. Yeah. And all the best of good statements. Yeah. I said that my granddaughter corrected me. She, I said, I listen, Vesta good. She said, it ain't Vesta, it's Vestal. She corrected She said, it's Vestal. <laughs> she, correct, she said it's she, she's listening closely. Uh, she's listening closely to people. Yeah, she said, it was, she said, you ain't saying her name right. <laughs> well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bottom line is we need the Spirit. I'm glad you brought that out, Mike. That's, that's what worship. A lot of folks don't realize that worship is not in the music. No. It's not in those things. It's from the heart. And you've got to worship in the Spirit. When, when the Holy Spirit, your Spirit lines up with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and that's what makes the service. That's why I love the services here. And, and, and grace you, and it didn't start when we came. You all have been that way 
I, I, I was here from back when I was seven, eight years old. I can remember coming here when Daddy used to. He spent, I think, about a year over here filling in. Yeah, he filled in quite a bit. Yeah. And he would do just like we're doing. He he would come Sundays. He'd go back home. Come back Sunday night. And uh, and I can remember. Him. I think somebody had a birthday. Somebody had a birthday celebration. Celebrating Jesus, ain't his birthday. Oh, we. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Let's give a little support. I'll say this tonight. I'm going to say this when I was going to say one or the other. I want this church to know the grace union. God is aligned just the right people who you've got here now. Amen. Who he has here. I, I will tell you, and I'm not just saying this out of expectancy. I feel it in my spirit that God is getting ready to flood this place with people who are hungry for the word of God. Amen. Because they're not getting it in churches. And it's sad. And I, I've never, and that's not my calling. I'm not out to to run churches through the mud and all of that. But the, the sad fact of it is there's churches where pastors are standing and not feeding the flock what the sheep need Amen. to be strengthened and growing in the Lord. And I've already had some in calls that have called, want to know what time services are, how to get here. And I just feel in my heart that we're going to see a flood of people that are hungry, truly hungry. And I really believe they're going to drive for miles and they're going, to, they're going to come for hours to drive because they're hungry. And I praise God that there are churches out there that are still standing on the word and feeding the sheep, feeding the flock. And those churches will survive and they'll thrive because God will provide. Amen. Amen. Any Amen. church that takes the spirit out, she might as well shut the door. Not nothing but the dead horse. <laughs> they might as yeah. well shut the door. Oh, you got the grave, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you, I love you. I really do. And I tell you, good to see our good friends, uh, Chris and Veronica. Uh, uh, let's make them happy. We love them and their family as well. Yeah. I mean, church family, but uh, family too. Family. Uh, now, the family to me by marriage, but they're still family. <laughs> I ain't heard nothing so amen's back here yet. <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. This stand tonight will be dismissed. Be praying again Sunday. Uh, don't know. We'll, we'll know a little bit more by Saturday. Maybe by Saturday morning. And we'll try to get it on the radio if we can. And people that listen. And we'll make all the phone calls we can. And check it out on Facebook and we'll, we'll get the word around. And, uh, and if we're not able to help church, tune in Sunday morning and call, call on your friends and family, those that maybe can't have church, uh, others, and tell them to tune in. Uh, to I know the Lord's giving me a message for Sunday, and so if we can't preach it here, I ain't going to just throw it by the wayside. I'll preach it on the radio. Yeah. So, yeah. so it won't go useless. His word to go out, won't it? <laughs> right. And let me say this, if any of you that, uh, if you can get out Sunday, if we, something happens beyond our control, we can't have church, come up to the radio station and, and come in there with us and join us. And we'll put you on there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that room ain't that big. We might have to open windows. Well, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> back to a three control room down there, ain't there? We'll put something in the back control room and others and... Yeah, with us, that was a good old time. Today. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness and all that you've done for us, Lord, your loving kindness, your mercy. God, you've been so good to us. And Lord, we know that Jeremiah said, Lord, that if it had not been for your mercies, uh, that every one of us would be consumed. Uh, and God, we're thankful tonight that you looked upon mankind. And Lord, you see that we needed help and we needed redemption and we needed, Lord, a Savior. And God, the one that would come, uh, Lord, that the blood of bulls and goats could, Lord, cleanse us and wash us. But Lord, it would take one to come down from the kingdom of heaven, Lord. Uh, 
and would leave the throne and come down to this earth and, and Lord identify with man and die that old cruel death and his blood would be spilled that blood that would purchase all that would come Lord in faith and trusting in that sacrifice Calvary and Lord in that resurrection at that empty tomb and Lord we're so thankful for that unspeakable gift of salvation and Lord it's so precious to us and Lord we count it Lord the value, Lord precious in our hearts and life from the moment that we were saved and born again and Lord I pray tonight that hearts and lives were blessed and touched by your word Lord those that were watching by the way of the internet or on Facebook Lord that they were blessed and touched and encouraged and lifted up, Lord, and stirred in their soul tonight by your word. And God, we thank you for this church. We ask you to continue to pour out your richest blessings upon us as we strive to grow in the grace and knowledge of your son, Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Lord, whatever it is, your will to be done this weekend. Lord, we pray that you'll keep folks safe, Lord, through what the storm that may come, Lord, upon us. Lord, we pray that you'll take care of the elderly, Lord, that may be shut in. And those that order without God that you'll touch them and Lord we pray that God should we gather here Sunday Lord that you would move in a mighty way and we know that you will you Lord you always do and we count it a great honor Lord that your presence is right here in our midst and Lord we thank you tonight for the service we thank you for the young people downstairs Lord we ask you to continue to bless their little lives Lord God touch our hand and Jacob as they continue Lord to lead them. Lord, as they continue to invest in these young people, and Lord, they, they sow that seed of your word in them. And God, we thank you and praise you tonight for all that you are and all that you do. We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. amen, and amen. We love you tonight and if we don't see you this weekend, wish every one of you a merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.